Okay, well, thank you. And uh, now I have much more data. And um, since I have 10 minutes, so I'm going to really have to rush through this. I'm going to read through my talk. Okay. Um, because I have a lot of stories to tell you, and I'll end up talking about them, and I won't finish. Okay, so in, in 10 minutes, I'm going to tell you how we humans can regenerate like amphibians and starfish. But for now, I want you to imagine that you're this mouse, the MRL mouse. And because in 1995, we found that this mouse could close ear holes and um, also regrow cartilage and regrow hair. And this has been considered by regeneration biologists as a true regenerative response. So we have been, uh, I, I was an immunologist and we really switched fields. And um, over the past 25 years or something like that, um, many, not just our lab, but many labs, many different, um, many different tissues um, have been shown, uh, the MRL mouse has been shown to be able to regenerate. So you can see that articular cartilage, tendon, myocardium, cornea, CNS, etc., cetera, uh, has been shown to, to regenerate in these mice. So what is it in these mice that, that is really uh, causing this effect? So um, what we found was that uh, there were actually two things that, that led us to, to find out what, what was happening. We had done a lot of gene mapping, which took uh, many years, and gene expression studies, and we found a molecule that actually um, regulated the level of HIF1-alpha, or hypoxia-inducible factor, a molecule that um, is um, of interest. Um, it was just given a Nobel Prize um, for the study of oxygen regulation, and HIF is intimately involved in this. And uh, these mice um, have a HIF reporter gene uh, attached to luciferase. So um, you can see on the left a non-regenerator mouse. Ear holes have been made in the, the mouse. And seven days later, there's almost no bioluminescence. But if you look on the right side, you can see the MRL mouse. You can see the ear holes were punched, and they light up. But the whole body, what's, what's happening is that the whole body shows this incredible uh, bioluminescent response. So, it, it, um, so from just an injury in the ear, everything becomes HIF positive, strongly HIF positive. So you can see quite a big difference. So the next clue um, was actually um, from studies carried out with Bob Navio um, at UCSD, who's a metabolism expert. And what he and I showed was that the MRL mouse actually has an unusual metabolism. It uses aerobic glycolysis, which is used by embryos, stem cells, tumor cells, and, and you can, this is often called the Warburg effect, and you can read that. Okay, and the next, so we, we wanted to find out how, oh, I forgot to mention, the Warburg effect is regulated by HIF-1-alpha. So HIF became our, um, uh, the molecule of interest. Um, we started collaborating with Phil Messersmith at UC Berkeley, and together we, um, well, he made the drug delivery system to deliver a molecule that regulates, that can upregulate HIF-1-alpha or stabilize the molecule to keep it from being um, broken down. And um, uh, we took this molecule and we injected it into mice, and we found that in non-regenerative mice, the ear holes close. So we were really excited about this. And um, I'm going to show you um, some other studies that we have been doing recently, and obviously work that's been funded. Um, the NIDCR 
uh, wanted us to really look at periodontal disease. And we started working with George Haji Shingalis at the University of Pennsylvania Dental School. And um, what we, so you can create a model of periodontal disease by putting a ligature around a molar. And what happens is that you get bacteria, you get an inflammation, the bone breaks down within 10 to 15 days. So, so you can see that, that this is, the roots are exposed, the tooth is ready to fall out. And this is exactly what you see in, um, in periodontal disease in human. We gave the drug and 15 days later, the bone completely regenerated normal architecture. So here it is. And we are currently, this is all unpublished data. We're currently um, uh, getting ready to publish this. Okay, so, and we've looked at a lot of other systems that, um, that show very similar effects. The liver, for example, we did liver resections. And in 24 hours, we were getting 60% liver regeneration. So it's really quite, quite active. Okay, now rejuvenation science. Well, Aubrey had invited me to a meeting and we kept talking about um, rejuvenation and I said, well, you know, this mouse regenerates but it really dies when it's quite young because it gets autoimmune disease. And um, so I never really uh, put the two together, I should have, um, but um, we had a very surprising finding, lucky finding, and we have been able to look at the effects of our drug on rejuvenation. Okay, so um, basically we had two very old mice. So we had been doing micro, micro CTs, you saw the, the teeth, and we had two very old mice sitting in the micro CT room. And um, one of the animals looked very old and it was sitting in the corner, hunched over, really very sick. We, um, micro, we scanned it, and um, it, it took three hours for it to wake up. So I thought, well, this animal looks so bad. And um, I gave it, I decided to give it drug and see what happened. Couldn't hurt. <laughs> um, so uh, I gave it, so there were three injections. And I gave it an injection, and five days later I came up and I was hoping the mouse would still be alive. And I saw this, I opened the cage, and there was this mouse running around. And I absolutely couldn't believe it. So we were really, really excited. Um, and I called the NIH, and I told them about it, and said, could we possibly get more old mice? So the, the National Institute of Aging actually um, sent us old mice to study and um, uh, of a different strain. And um, so, oh, oh, this, so let me just say that this, this mouse that I just showed you, we had also micro CT'd the jaw. And um, this mouse obviously didn't have a ligature, but what this mouse had was very mottled bone with cracks in the bone. And, um, and you can see, uh, let's see, right here, you can see that there's really a lesion. And um, after giving the drug, what we saw was that the cracks in the bone um, had disappeared and the bone had grown back, it's thick. And um, so this was, um, this was a mouse that, that really had recovered. Now the next, so these old mice had other problems. They would develop, and they're all older than two years. Okay, um, this is, um, these are chronic wounds that you see in aged patients. Um, they are due to pressure ulcers. And this is a, these are old mice that get these terrible lesions, they get infected, the animals die. So a student in the lab um, had 
actually come to me and said, you know, this mouse 04 keeps jumping out of the cage. Again, another mouse that got injected and, and um, did not look well, but, but recovered. And you can see that within here, 16 days, 25 days, the lesion has completely closed. The hair grows back incredibly quickly. And um, again, this is with um, our, our, um, our treatment with our drug. So um, I have other examples. I don't really have time to talk about it, but tomorrow we can talk about it. And I want to thank everybody in my lab and collaborators and funding agencies. And now, in terms of the digit, we just got money from DOD to look at um, uh, digit regeneration and nerve, rege nerve regeneration in hand injuries. So that is what the prediction is about. But there are many other predictions we could make as well. Okay, thank you. Zena, do you have a question? Do you have any questions? Okay. Anybody in the audience? I would ask a question. Do you have a question? <laughs> sure. Ask a quick question. Uh, thank you very much. It was a One wonderful question. talk. Yeah. Um, my question is if it's, uh, the drug is related to uh, activating HIF-1 I pathway, if it's okay for you to... Uh... Oh, sorry. It's a, uh, so the molecule is a PhD inhibitor. It actually has very specific effects. So um, it's different than other PhD inhibitors, I must say. But PhD inhibitors bind a lot of different molecules. And they, um, there's PhDs, there's P4Hs, but there are a lot of molecules. We're studying them right now. And um, really a broad range of effects. So um, what we're really doing is trying to activate potentially all or any of these molecules and turn on whatever it is that gives us this effect. And after um, 10 days, shut it off. And then you, so what we believe is happening is a dedifferentiation effect. We see recirculation effects. And then um, at 10 days, we stop it, and then we get redifferentiation. So that's what we think is, is happening. Um, can you, for those of us who own like a, a superficial or you know, like beginning undergraduate understanding of biology, give us an under like a, a sense for like what your working model for how this mechanism works. And also like there's a sort of mystery here, which is that it appears that the body has a capability to heal itself, but it doesn't use it. And can you give us a sense of why that might be the case? Thank you. Well, I can um, tell you that if you look at the non the non regenerating mouse, definitely HIF is important and maybe other molecules that we haven't identified yet, but let's talk about HIF. Um, HIF does cause dedifferentiation of cells, something like producing IPS cells. We do see immature stem cell-like markers that are activated. And, um, and then uh, HIF also turns on the vascular response. We know that soon after giving HIF, all of these endothelial precursors, um, blood vessel precursors leave the bone marrow and go to the site of injury and build new blood vessels, which I think is probably one of the major things. So it's very rapid. And I think one of the major things why we are seeing such a rapid response in terms of these old mice. Um, and then we withdraw HIF and you get redifferentiation. So we, we've seen this in the ear hole. We believe it's happening in these other systems. So that's what I think is at least one of the things that's going on. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you, Ellen. Okay, good.